This week, we went to go see Kingdom of the Planet of Apes in IMAX. That's right, in IMAX, but is it any good? We'll talk. Hi, how are you doing today? It's Just Jess here. I hope you're having a good day and today, yes. Yeah. So we got the movie Kingdom of the Planet of Apes and we went to go see this in IMAX, but is it worth it in that format? Honestly, I feel like that entirely depends on you. I could not find filmed or shot for IMAX like I normally do on this review channel here on YouTube. You do get the black bars on the top and the bottom and I did see that myself. You do not get to experience the extended aspect ratio if a movie was filmed for IMAX like we talk about here. Although watching this in IMAX, I did feel the CGI and motion capture is still amazing especially in this format and of course the proprietary sound pro provides powerful in-depth audio experience. Kingdom of the Planet of Apes is an action-adventure sci-fi movie releasing in theaters just in time for Mother's Day as well as summer blockbuster seats. So by the way happy Mother's Day for all the that you're watching. It is said 300 years after the world of war for the apes movie so 300 years after the Caesar incident. Young Noah, he's an ape, gets ready for a ceremony only, only to get suddenly attacked by other demons known as apes that get destroyed and his villages captured so he sets on a quest and embark on a journey to retrieve them back. Will he find them? What about the thing with Caesar and his teachings and the girl that's beautiful on the poster? Find out as we talk about it. I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. My history with this franchise, I was on the fence of giving this movie a full length review, but then of course a subscriber, Karen, hi Karen, what's up? And she's also a dear friend of me, reached out and she's like, hey, are you gonna do a review of the Kingdom of Planet of Apes? Because she's, she liked the CGI, she really liked the movie. So I'm like, all right, well that answered my question. To be very honest with you guys, I always tell people I saw the first one back in like 2011, the Caesar one where he's growing up with James Franco. Unknowingly, I watched the trailers back again. So I watched the trailers to get him preparation for this movie i can't believe i watched the second one in theaters opening weekend because i'm just like i did see this i saw it, i knew exactly what the storyline was but to be very honest with you between 2014 and 2017 which war of the planet of Abyss, which is the last trilogy for the caesar one in the new generation i didn't see that one in theaters i didn't even know what that one's about i mean i saw the trailers but i just saw the first one and second one and i was telling people that i only saw the first one i fell off of liking the apes movies because i just liked anime and like romance and of course during 2014 and 2017 2017 I was going through a dark time with like a breakup and drinking and dating the wrong people so I didn't watch the third one but based on what I talked about with other people I kind of know what happens but don't worry no spoilers for the first three installments that's still there so of course we're talking about this movie one thing I do what I like about this movie watching it in IMAX is Karen's right the CGI and the motion capture they use to make these apes real life like us it's it's amazing especially in IMAX yes technology has been advancing every year and the law of diminishing returns has only backfired a little bit but still there is no other way to put it that technology especially the motion capture looks brilliant you could even see the hair follicles on the ape I'm like what like sometimes when they're riding the horses you see the hairs and like the feet move I'm like wow that is some attention to detail and the world that we created or what happened after 300 years have you ever played the last of us part two that game has similar themes and tropes to this or if you watch the tv show hit series the last of us part one when you're on the horseback when ellie's trying to go through this navigation of seattle you see mother nature reclaiming claim itself based on the human structures that we built such as the societies oh that's supposed to be a yankee stadium that's supposed to be this city so even though i'm comparing it to last of us part two last of us part two in terms of how the themes and the feel and the look of the movie is similar to this even down to the storyline which something happens in the beginning noah which is our protagonist ellie goes sets on the revenge quest and of course they embark on his journey traveling wilderness and of course mother changer has taken over that so i thought that was a cool similar themes and tropes that i saw i was like whoa this is amazing of course noah is our protagonist and unlike caesar he doesn't know anything about his teachings the way of living and it's cool because he finds two people from the opposite end he sees 300 years after 300 years caesar his teachings have been manipulated and confused and also one of these guys that's true to the teachings of caesar and is like his friend throughout the movie saying that no ape kills no ape and friends with humans and like apes stronger together which i love how they reedited it here of course the main villain does this exceptionally well because it's like passed down to generations Caesar to them is like their God. Now, yes, of course, I'm a human and we have Jesus Christ and that he's the only God, but to them, Caesar was their God. But it was passed down from the many generations, so he's manipulating and twisting the words, basically warping the base of his strategies of the way of the apes choose to live by enslaving other apes in terms of his clans, which I'm 
like, wow, dude, that's why he's so villainish. And he takes advantage of these clients too, saying that this is for Caesar. This is for Caesar, for Caesar. Because, and then I'm like, okay, well, obviously no one is alive. Technically when Caesar was alive, they were just passed down for many generations. And I was like, wow, that is a great opportunity that movie took based on what is going on in the background and the feedback that I've got from the first two installments. Keep in mind, I didn't watch the third one. I mean, I will, but time is of the essence right now. Over the past day, I've been looking at a lot of trailers and like scenes and clips, and there's a lot of hints, Easter eggs, and even callbacks to the 1990 films of the Apes movie, such as, I don't even want to say anything because it's such a nod to the symbolisms that what Caesar stood up for that you see fully realized in here. So of course, when we see the girl in the, the trailers in the poster, keep in mind, I don't watch trailers, but I did watch it after. I'm just like, wow, the beautiful girl in the posters, especially when she shows up, I was like, dude, she's hot, she's amazing. I would love to wife her and of course be inside of her. Even though she's there, I will clean her up. Nova is her name and she adds a human element that of course they mean you can connect. But her character really transforms in the second half and we get some revelations and secrets uncovered to what she's capable of. In the third movie, of course, this is the third movie, I was told that humans, the virus has mutated for humans to be mute. So they can't have the, they lost the ability to communicate, which sucks because I'm a human, I love communicating, you know, and they're more in primitive clothing. I'm like, what? Like really? So Nova, the girl that I've seen in the trailer is really uncovers a lot of secrets and even the film itself sets up future installments because the last one probably made a lot of money. So even when you say after the end credits or at the end of the credits, something happens that sets up future installments, I'm like, wow, this is amazing, I can't wait. One thing that I do gotta say, and it's not really a knock in the film, the film is two hours and 20 minutes. I don't mind going in on their journey, like talking about things, learning about the humans, making jokes. You don't get a lot of exposition and dialogue, like heavy lore. I mean, yes, you do get that, but it, most of the dialogues between the apes are what's going on. A lot of people, not just me, but I'm taking my likeness off film that a lot of people can feel the weight length of the runtime. Two hours and 20 minutes, it's a long sit through and plus 20 minute trailers, you're literally at the theaters for three hours almost. And don't get me wrong, that's not bad for me, but I'm just saying you can feel the runtime. It's like, okay, it's slowing down a little bit. They're just catching up, maybe another action scene, but not nothing really exciting happens until the second half of the movie, but that's fine because this is setting up a new, hopefully trilogy of Noah continuation. But just letting you know that for the people out there, this can be bogging down the runtime. At the end of the day, talking to Karen, watching this movie in theaters, I had a great time. It was a great fun watch and thrilling to see where the series goes next. Am I going to go see The War of the Planet of Apes, which is the third movie in the Caesar trilogy? I will. I did watch recaps for the first two and the sec first and second installment, but watching this series goes next, especially the human aspect, what happens for the revelations, of course, with Nova, the beautiful girl. Yeah, I am down to see this again. At the end of the day, I'm going to give this a C plus, and I saw this in IMAX, so your results may vary. If you made it this far please hit that like button hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video with that take care bye